You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Dance Moms After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. Two five six seventeen twenty nine, and now another post game wrap up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Dance Moms After Show. can echo if I want to because Jason J. Carter is not here to tell me otherwise. Hey everyone, <laughs> it's Giselle Ugardi here at After Buzz TV and you're here for a very special edition of Dance Moms After Show. Today joining me in the studio I have Miss Gina Starbuck. Hello. Say Miss hello. Giselle. Hi everybody. Thank How you so you? much for joining us. If you are a huge fan of Abby Lynn Miller, you know that she is been featured on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition. Dun, dun, and this dun. season of Dance Moms, we have lots of students from Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition making different cameo appearances, um, you know, being on the Candy Apple Tour, really. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> tell us what you've been up to. Oh, gosh. I've been I've been on a tour of my own. I'm doing the whole dance convention thing. So I know we've seen some of that on Dance Moms. Mm -hmm. I've been on an 18-city tour. This Ooh. weekend is my last city. 18 cities. Yes. So it's you must be exhausted. A little bit. <laughs> but mostly that and just, you know, doing gigs in between, working on my music, the whole acting thing. And will we see you on the second season of Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I have some other projects going on that I cannot speak of currently. Oh, wow. That are maybe getting in the way of that. So, But, 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 we'll you're, but you're not saying no. I'm not saying no, just okay. yet. <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm so happy that you're here, and you can give us a little bit of a behind-the-scenes dish on the show, on the, co not the contestants, on the dancers. We're not competing in this show. Yes. And also, something that you're bringing along with you is Anthony Burrell, supposed to be calling in tonight. Yes, my good friend Anthony. So, we look forward to hearing from him, and also, if you're sitting at home, if you're watching live, um, in the chat room, and also manning our studio over here, we've got... Mr. Stevens, hello. Hey guys, how are we doing tonight? <laughs> um, and you can also call us to join the conversation, 424-256-1729. Now, without further ado, for one of the first times this season, we start the episode off and we're not breaking down the pyramid. Instead, we're just starting to work on dances. We have four mm -hmm. solos, Asia, Chloe, Maddie, and Kendall. And in the group number, everybody is in it. And then from the Candy Apples, we have a duet featuring our very favorite, and Jason J. Carter's not so favorite, Jalen. Um, <laughs> and then we also have a solo from my absolute favorite, Zach, who I know you've I worked with Zach. and is just to die <laughs> for. And for all we know, we might actually get a surprise phone call from him. It wouldn't be the first time. We love him and his mom, Gina. Um, also, want to give a little shout out to Christy Ray, who is the real deal. <laughs> <laughs> she is the real deal. I spoke to her today. Um, she has lost her voice, so she can't call us tonight. I was begging her, like, please call in. I miss you. I miss yeah. Asia. But she said she lost her voice. She'll be calling soon. She Good. Promises, or hopefully so. she'll be on the couch one of these days. <laughs> yeah. Yes, with Asia. And it turns out, so yes, the, the Christy Ray that messaged me on Facebook, that emailed me, you know, we had these long heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Conversations. It, it was, in fact, it has been verified officially. <laughs> Today. Official. Today, yes. And we've also Check got some mark. juicy news and gossip as well um, from my from my good friend, Yvette Waltz. Not a very good friend of Christy oh, Ray. But. No, but <laughs> Yvette's great, right? Let's talk about some of the charades of this episode. Um, to begin with, Kelly decides that she wants to meet with the music manager while they're in New York. Brooke didn't get a solo this week, so she wants to go and have Brooke pursue something else. What do you think of Brooke as a singer versus a dancer? 
<laughs> well, be honest. <laughs> I'm not one to knock anyone's dream. I mean, let's and you be, do both. Yeah, I do do both myself, and it's challenging. Uh, she's a lucky, triple threat, actually. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, wings for the camera. I mean, you know, if she wants to do it, she better start training, though. I mean, she said it herself. She was in the studio with, with Melody from mm-hmm. Pussycat Dolls saying, yeah. well, I'm not that technical, you know. So, I mean, if she wants to do it, she better start getting some vocal classes. Well, but she's got an audience. Exactly. I mean, they said, what, 25,000 downloads on her single? That's more than a yeah. lot of artists. And more than that on YouTube for her you know, self-directed music video, music video <laughs> in, L- in L.A., or sorry, in Hollywood, Hollywood, as they call it. On the bus. Spirit on Spirit fingers just for that. <laughs> um, and Abby actually lets her go. She lets her do it, and that was very unexpected. But she even says, like, that's a joke. Yeah. But I think that's... Brooke's barely committed to dance at this point. Yeah, it seems like Brooke's a little lost, dire- directionally challenged currently. I mean, but she's a teenager. What is she now, like 14, that's true. 13? I mean, in high, she's in high school. I believe she's a freshman, sophomore. How happens. do you? How did you balance it? I mean, do you ha- do you feel like you have to put both feet into one? Can you dabble at both? Do you have to focus? I focused in high school. I definitely focused on dance. I chose like dance and and really like dove into that. But then my senior year, I decided I wanted to do a little bit of musical theater and stuff. So then I didn't compete. And I, you know, you definitely I think need to make some decisions if you're doing school. If you're homeschooled, like some of these kids, yeah, then they have a lot more. Of time to be able to pursue all other things but what do you think of that and you work with a lot of kids too especially as a choreographer of having them be homeschooled and start this professional career at such a young age I mean I think it's really dependent upon the kid you know and it's really really important that the parents are like kind of really on them about certain things because some of these kids just really lose sight of the fact that they're still children yeah um, but I'm Which also, I think can be the parents' fault, though, too. Oh, like, absolutely. It can work both ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so with you on that. But <laughs> I'm all for it. If it's necessary, like, you know, Sophia, who they had earlier on in the show. Have I you know, worked with her? I have. I know her, and I know her mom, and, like, you know, she's busier than I am. But uh. she seems like she's got a pretty good head on her shoulders, and she's still, you know, taking care of business, and... She's not like this crazy egotistical little child who is a diva. So well, hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she can find, you know, love life and happiness as yes. an adult. <laughs> well, I mean, love lives and careers don't always. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, we'll, t- we'll have a private we'll conversation. See. We'll about see that. about that one. <laughs> um, what do you think about Christy? getting along with the other moms because you you know Christy well you you guys speak so what do you think of her as a momager as a stage mom as <laughs> You know, she said to me when she was texting me earlier, be easy on us tonight. <laughs> oh, come on. I see, think- you know, <laughs> if we didn't talk about you at all, that then would be, be a mad. problem. <laughs> but right. you give us something to talk about. And at the end of the day, we either have to remind ourselves or we acknowledge the fact that she's only a kid. Yes. And we forget that all the time. And we also forget, wait, they're real people. Yes. <laughs> and it's editing and it's production and that sort of thing. So so as, you know, continue with that, as a momager, as a stage mom, behind the scenes, how she's being treated versus the way that she reacts. Yeah, I mean, you know, as far as I know, Christy's really cool. I never had a problem with her. I do know that she's the type, though, if somebody's talking trash, she's going to get right in their face and, like, call them out on it. And she has no problem with the quote-unquote drama. (laughs) But it makes good TV. I mean, and at the end of the day, it's like the other moms are, you know, talking crap about her and picking on her and whatever they're doing. But, like, they said it themselves. She's not there to make friends. She's there to get Asia some training, some yeah. recognition. So it seems like she's doing just that. Do you think she, they kind of touched it on it a little bit, um, how she's in fact probably a scarier stage mom than everybody else? <laughs> not not like a toddlers and tiara type of a thing where she's living through her daughter, but in that, like, she'll, she'll walk the walk and she'll talk the talk. Yeah, I think that, <laughs> they might be right about that. I mean, scary is a... a I don't know, one of those words that (laughs) can have a lot of different meanings, so. (laughs) What I really like about her, though, is that, you know, she is, you can tell that she's doing it for her daughter, and she is trying to be a professional for the most part, unless she's having to be defensive about something. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, you see some of the moms, like for example, Jill, who's saying, oh, Kendall will get there, oh, Kendall will get there, or well, Kendall deserves it, or Kendall's just as good. But the difference is that with Christy, Asia really is this solid talent that whether she's technically behind, she still oh, shines. She's, she's a little firecracker. I mean, working with her, like I saw it firsthand. She, she really, though, I mean, she is on our show anyway. On Abby's Ultimate, she was so much younger than everybody else mm -hmm. that she had problems, like you know, picking up choreography, picking up choreography, and all that stuff. But every time she got on stage and she delivered, you know, and yeah, you're Even right. Even if she does it wrong, she still. She executes makes it, it. She feels the music. and Well, she's a star. That's a mark of a star, right? It's like she can be on stage with 10 people and she messes up and she makes it look like they're messing up because she owns it so much. So <laughs> That's kind of true. I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. But it is. I mean, there's. The, I mean, I was always, I was a dancer as well. And I was, I was always trained, you know, if, if you're not smiling big, then you're going to make everyone else, or if, if not if everyone is, like, you know, smiling big, then everyone else is going to look stupid. Yeah. Because there's just that one person who's delivering and then... But she dances with conviction, and I love that she about her. She's um, right. Do you think the moms are jealous of Asia? Probably. And of Christy yeah. Ray? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Maybe a little bit. Even if she's not always at the top of the pyramid? Yeah, I mean, clearly they see it. I don't know. These moms, I don't know the the dance moms' moms personally. Right. So it's hard for me to say. I know so much of it really is editing, like you yeah. mentioned. I mean, it's TV. they got to make good TV. Um, but it just seems like a lot. A little, a little much. It is so much, and I'm like... Hello. Can Did you think the argument between Christy and Christy? Well, I know, right? <laughs> that just makes me laugh. Blonde Christy, Christy and brunette and Christy. Christy. <laughs> Christy. <laughs> yes. Christy with a K, Christy with a CH. Um, so blonde Christy, Chloe's mom, and brunette Christy, Age's mom. Who do you think was the one that started it? I don't know. It's really hard for me to say. I was just laughing because they had that back and forth where, what do they keep saying? They both kept saying the same thing over and over I don't want to look at your face. Yeah, like something like, get out of my face. <gasps> do you want to hit me? Are you going to hit me? Hit, yeah. Get, get out of my face. Are you going to hit me? Get out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> it was over and over again. I'm like, okay, what's happening? What's, what's I just lo I lost going it. On? I lost Is she going to go outside? Reason. Is she going to take off the earrings? What's happening? <laughs> I lost the whole reason behind it. I, honest to God, don't really know who started it. But I don't let us know at home if you're watching, whether you're in the live chat or if you're watching tomorrow on YouTube, who you think started that whole argument, because yeah. it could kind of go both ways. Because, yes, Blonde Christie, we all know, is an instigator. At the same time, though, if you flip the switch for Brunette Christie, she is a ticking time bomb and yes. she will, you know, fight for her for her babies you know the, the little cub yes if you will <laughs> she's like a lion but mom i have something. to say that i think for me i was a little um i i almost gave brunette christie a little bit of a fault because she's the one that dropped the f-bomb first she uh, was the one that started with the yeah that's true the the, the words the inappropriate words for the little ones <laughs> yeah it was like okay which happens so much let's on this show take it down just a little it. Let's have a seat. These poor As children. Tony Moore would say. Um, do you know anything about this Beyonce wants to meet Asia business? I do not. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish I did. When I saw it, I was like, oh, okay. I could see it's why. like that. Yeah. I can totally see why. She's like a little Beyonce herself. So. Couldn't you see like me. a Beyonce with an Asia? They need to do some sort of something. music video. Yeah. It'd be so great. Like the little her and now the grown her. Yeah. I'd be really into that. Um, <laughs> other shenanigans. We had the candy apples, which I mean, them and themselves. It's it's just really. I just want to know where all these dancers came from. I do too. <laughs> Open auditions, casting calls, LA casting, I don't know. Yeah. Like, how do you market that? They're Did they even know that they were trying out for candy apples, or was it just an open call and they were, you know, 10 hours? Who for knows? 80. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You'll, we will never know, but they do have some great little dancers there now, those boys. Wow. Oh. I mean, come on. Zach, Zach, yes. I love Zach. And Zach, your solo was killer. Amazing. I know you're we'll taking dance class right now. Side note, I did get a text from Gina. She is going to call us in a few minutes. Oh, I love Gina. She asks, is that okay? So I'm going to just give her a yes while we're <laughs> Absolutely. talking. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, I, I loved Victoria, who's from Larkin, which is in Minnesota, which is where I'm from. Oh, so really? I, yeah, so I danced oh, at Larkin. She's Not a, everyone forever, but I've done workshop. But watch One out. of those. She's a Larkin girl. She's a Larkin girl. <laughs> 
kind of a big deal, people. It really is. They're very bendy and twirly and all of the above. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Yes. Um, but they, the concept of their dance I thought was really cool. And I thought that just in the studio it looked interesting. But when they put it all together, which we'll talk about when we talk about the competition, I was, I was really blown away. I yeah. think, Anthony, if you're watching already or if you're watching this later, for sure one of my favorite pieces that I've ever seen him put together. Absolutely. He's put together some great pieces for us. He has a really great mind. And that makeup was stellar. Shout out to the hair and makeup department, by the way, on this show, because I feel like they probably rarely get any. You and know. I was going to say, do you think the moms did that? Or <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Doubtful. Jalen's dad, Rick, was he the makeup <laughs> artist in the back? Maybe. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I've seen some dance dads do some some interesting Crazy hair and makeup tricks. <laughs> I've had my dad fix a costume for me before. He's a, he's a surgeon, and so he was <laughs> like, literally he was like this? stitching a hem on something like on his hands and knees. My mom was trying to do it, and he was like, "Excuse me." That's amazing. Like, and it's like, you'll never for forget you. that. Oh, right? never, never. <laughs> That's like one of my go-tos. Um, so they went to Bryant Park. They went ice skating without Abby. <laughs> and Which was that was an ordeal. <laughs> um, not only because there was the whole skating behind Abby's back, but then it was a crying issue. And then the candy apple showed up to complete all of the shenanigans. So yes. let's start off with the fact that they even went to begin with behind Abby's back. Did you think it was a big deal that they wanted to go ice skating before competition? I mean, they're kids, Abby. Like, come on. I under I completely understand Abby's reasoning as to why she says they shouldn't ice skate. Mm -hmm. But they're children. Like, yeah. let them have a little fun occasionally. I mean, but I was dying over the fact that Maddie was, like, freaking out because she didn't freaking want out. to. I don't really think, I mean, some of the moms were like, oh, it's because she's not good at it. I think she was actually thinking, like, either Abby's going to get mad or I'm going to get hurt or mm -hmm. both. I think that was her fear. Falling she's on such ice is not fun. Oh, gosh, no. And those girls don't wear tights either. So showing up to a competition with bruises all over your legs. Yeah, not pretty. <laughs> it's, not, it's not comfortable. It's not flattering. And it can totally be a distraction. Did you yeah. ever, you know, prevent yourself from doing something for the sake because of dance, of yeah. No, but I regretted at one point that I didn't. I injured myself snowboarding when I was okay. like 13 years old and I was not dancing for a couple months because of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, why did I do that? So I get it. But yeah. then again, you're a kid. Like I say to them, live life. You're not even 18 yet. You're not even like, I mean, yes, they are quote unquote professional dancers right. at this point, but it's like, Wait till you're an adult and you have to do yeah. your own bills. Like at least reach 16 or something yeah. or 17 <laughs> before you start taking it too seriously. Yeah. I had a, a similar thing too where I went sledding and I totally just shattered my ankle. Ugh. And that was just awful. It was like a, I ran into this frozen haystack and it sucked. It was awful. But then once I got older, I learned my lesson and I, I was boring. I was like, oh no, I have a pageant this weekend or I have a dance competition. I can't go snowboarding. I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't get in the chlorine and I was a priss, but it yeah, was fun. See, it comes when you're older. These kids should just be kids. That's what I say. Still um, train hard, but be kids. So the girls had to do a hundred pushups. <laughs> yeah, that's while really Asia hard. ran her by solo. The way. And Ricky Palomino just texted me as I well. I saw that. Ricky, we What love is the you. phone number again? 424-256- one seven two nine. I'm gonna text him right now. Ricky, call us. We love you. Um, <laughs> moving on to this runaways dance as well. Oh, what did you think of this little Jalen Vivi moment in the hallway? Oh my gosh, I thought it was the cutest, most awkward, funny little thing. And they both have their like, you know, little kid speech thing. And she was like, I, I caught her. <laughs> and they were, I was just like, what is happening? Would you like to reenact the scene for us, please, Sheena? <laughs> Show us know. your acting chops. Summarize the summarize know, the conversation. I just know they were talking about Anthony and like Jalen was saying that he was upset with, with Anthony and the other little voices. And then Vivi was saying how he yells and she was there the whole time <laughs> and I just the best part was when she said I found a quarter <laughs> and, then, and then at the end she said that was funny it was like they were trying to flirt but they but did they know I don't think I so. don't know because Kathy asked her last week it was it last week or two weeks ago if she liked Jalen and she said no uh, but she's I been trying to I set them up that. <laughs> They're both a little awkward. I think she's bigger than him, too. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's kind of how it usually is when they're that age. I was always bigger than the boys. Really? But, yeah, not anymore. I, I was, like, 
I was like the little, little one all the time. The little one <laughs> still am. Do you think that Jalen's comparable to Asia in terms of being behind in the candy apples? Because he's really good at the head spins and the break dancing, but he doesn't really technically I mean, know. Yeah, if we're talking about like the technique and picking up choreography and stuff, maybe yeah. But it's like they do a really nice job of kind of hiding that. You mm -hmm. know, the choreography is very specific to him and his strengths. So that's again smart on Anthony's, Anthony's part. part. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that happens. It's like even now, example, tomorrow I'm shooting this uh, promo video for this charity event that I'm putting on, which I Do you want to plug it? Is. Yeah, it's called Art for Life. I have done it for five years. We've raised like over 50 grand for the charity. This year I'm doing it a little differently. Every other year I've had all these guest artists. This year it's going to be my own show entirely. So all my choreography, Ooh. maybe some of my music. I'll bring in a couple guest artists. But tomorrow we're shooting a promo video and I have a bunch of dancers that have really different strengths, you know, and I've just decided like they're all brilliant what they do. So why not play on their strengths? Yeah. It's something that happens in the professional world too, Absolutely. you know? So mm -hmm. I say, hey, Jalen, you keep doing those heads. Do spins. your thing. <laughs> but train. <laughs> but train. Um, well, during the rehearsal, oh, we after one of the rehearsals, we see that um, some of the girls go meet with Caesar to do some other training. Acting. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hold that on. Was... Sorry. Let me let me do that again. <laughs> I'm going to put it in quotations with my fingers if you're listening on iTunes. Acting. Acting. Quote, quote. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Let's be real. <laughs> the dramatic scene. Yeah. They they were like, it was really cool. Yeah. Um... <laughs> that was Paige, right? I got to have a range of emotions. Yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see the range of emotions <laughs> either. Um, do you think that uh, that acting is something that comes naturally for dancers since they're having to exhibit uh, ranges of emotions? To an extent, screen? but it's a, it's a different beast, you know? There's just a different... You can't... Yeah, I just had this conversation this morning, actually, that, you know, you can't just decide, like, oh, I'm a pro professional dancer, and I've been on camera, and I've been on stage, and I've had to exude emotions, but and then you just decide you're an actor. Like, it doesn't work that way. There's I'm different, an actor. There's a different skill set. There's a different you way. You mean you don't just turn into an actor when you move to Los Angeles? <laughs> right. Every, no, like, not everyone can be an actor? <laughs> right. I don't understand. I thought this was where you could do anything and be successful and have no talent whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true, too, at times. It is true at times. But, yes, I mean, to an extent, as dancers, we have to express emotion, and, and we don't get to have words most of the time. So, like Maddie, I would consider her a good little actress. She could be. But, you know, there's some training that has to happen <laughs> again, like the vocals, the acting, training. Yes. <laughs> Did you have any more commentary over there? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, I'll talk about it after the show. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I, it's, it's like, like that. that. It's like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> the views expressed by. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Are you gonna play it? No. Do we have? Are you it? back there? The button. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, just I know. Do you know what I'm talking the about? The button. Thank you. Are those you. of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect uh. the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Um, anyway, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Oh, by the way, I will be on Awkward later on tonight doing the Awkward After Show at 10 p.m. Pacific time. You're welcome. Aha. Uh -huh. um, Check her out. Oh, Gina is actually calling me on my cellular device oh. currently. His ex mom. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll keep going. Well, just keep text going. her. I'm going to text I mean, her. Just answer it and tell her to text you. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, Kelly and Chrissy decide that they want to pretend that they're real New Yorkers and they go to a bar. Yes. Which Aren't they is always great. at a bar? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish I would have thought about bringing, bringing the bar here for our show tonight and bringing like glasses or <laughs> oh. pictures or something. But we could reenact slipped, that scene. Slipped That's my like mind. That. I probably would. I know we could have done a reenactment of that one. Test our chops there. Um, but do you think that. Uh, they were talking about tough love. Do you think that they actually like the tough love? And Christy, the tough love from Abby. Oh, I don't know. I mean, clearly they like it enough to stay. Mm -hmm. So that's that. But they keep leaving and coming back and arguing and getting mad about it and crying about it. Yeah, I mean, I it. I, it's just, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm at a loss. Have you ever had a teacher like Abby? 
No, not really. Really? <laughs> I've had some pretty rough teachers, but Abby is definitely one of one the, of her own kind. One of her own kind. What about in person? Do you feel do you feel like she's just as tough, if not tougher? Yeah. Really? I do. It's I really not just do. for the cameras. I will say though, when you're on her side, she's good to you. Like, if she decides she likes you, she'll be good to you. Well, obviously she likes you. Yeah, yeah, we're cool. I would hope so. Hey, Abby, if you're watching. What's up? What's up, girl? Um, yeah, I mean, she she can be tough, but she can also be really sweet and kind. Oh, yeah. You know, and they don't really show too much of that. And we see her stick up for her own yeah. at the end of this. And on, on more than one occasion, which is great. That's part of why we love Abby. Um, I, ge I genuinely think that she really does care about these kids. And, like, she does and says things because... She has their best interests at heart. Yeah. Even when she's being crazy, she, her intention is good. I do believe that about her. Or else I wouldn't even be here talking about her show, honestly. <laughs> now, I'm hoping that Anthony will end up calling in, but um, just from watching, do you think that Anthony is someone who uh, Kathy's pushing his buttons, or is he pushing the kids too far? We have yeah. a caller. It's not It's not Anthony, I think, though. Oh, maybe it's oh. Gina. Put them on. Maybe uh, it's Gina. Call her on the line with After Buzz TV's Dance Moms. Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, who's calling? This is this is Ricky Palomino. Oh, hi, babe. <laughs> hey. Ricky. How you guys doing? If you didn't hear it on the phone, it's Ricky Palomino, also from Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, and he's joined me in the studio for Dance Moms as well as one of my guest co-hosts. I believe you're in Dallas, right? Yeah, I am. Thank you for calling. How's it going? It's going great. Um, I am actually uh, just tuning in now, but uh, I have to tell you guys, you guys look amazing on there. Oh, and, uh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> We're both here. You guys, you guys are just <laughs> the perfect duo. It's awesome. I'm, like, I'm totally enjoying the show right now during dinner. Well, we missed you as a trio. You totally yeah. could have been here. Hopefully you'll be able to come into the studio later this season or, I don't know, perhaps um, <clears throat> on Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition next season, maybe? <laughs> maybe, maybe I will totally, totally be back in. No, but um, I was gonna say, uh, you know, I wanted to bring up the point that you know, seeing Asia and and Zach, even with Candy Apples, like coming from Abby's Ultimate, it's just so nice to see their growth and mm -hmm, how yes. they've gotten used to like camera work and you know, just kind of being in the limelight a little bit. For Absolutely. Sure. Do you? I mean, I'm just so proud of them. Me too. Me too. And you, and you really can see it. And I, I really have noticed, especially with Zach, that solo. I don't know if you watched that solo or not, Ricky, but he performed a solo that I believe Anthony choreographed. Yeah. And it took my breath away. I always, really? he was always someone who to me stood out, but technically I was blown away. It was away. beautiful and like really connected and he like kind of dug deep. I was really proud of him too. Mm -hmm. And he was dancing like a man. I know on the show. Yes. I, I yes. think Ricky, myself, everybody, we oh. were all on him, right, Ricky, about being more masculine. Yeah. And he's starting to yeah. take ownership of that. So it's good. I was just, yeah, I was totally going to say that, you know, because um, he's turning into a little man, but like what better to like work with Anthony? Because Anthony has a way of like obviously working with kids, but for Zach to look up to like such a strong male choreographer as, as Anthony. Like, I'm so excited for him in his future. Yeah. Well, Ricky, we have some other callers that are going to be joining us today. But before I let you go, I want to ask you, um, and one thing that we're starting to talk, to talk about is being able to balance taking care of kids and also working with the parents. How is it as a choreographer trying to find that proper balance to get your point across without being mean, but also, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with these kids who aren't always listening? I mean, what's that like? Ah, that's <laughs> a tough one. You got to really, you got to really sit back and, um, you know, kind of analyze the, the parents' uh, association with their child. And, you know, um, yeah, just take a step back and sometimes not necessarily talk too much, but get to know them yeah. and mm -hmm. the what comes out without even addressing them at first. Mm -hmm. um, seeing how quickly they come, they uh, pick up choreography, choreography and just getting, yeah, but literally I think it's getting to know, know them as a person first. Mm -hmm. Love and it. you know what, Ricky, you're so good at that. Like I think yeah. about like that solo that Ricky did for Asia Ugh. on Abby's Ultimate with the big Ugh. with the big dress, and it was like so perfect uh, for her. Please, if you're listening, go YouTube it. Asia did. Was it the the Wicked Witch or the Wizard of Oz? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the, go yeah, look the it up. Ricky Palomino choreography. 
Amazing. Um, Ricky, thank you so much for calling in. I hope to see you in here soon. Let me know when you get back to L.A. and let's for sure hang. Yes. Absolutely. You girls thank are you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye, babe. We Have a safe trip back. <laughs> And I'm, Hi. Have, I'm so sorry. I, I couldn't find the number anywhere, and I'm driving. I was like, she's well, calling me on the phone. Is this Gina? Phone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and now we have Gina <laughs> on the line. Zach's mom. We're being spoiled tonight at After Buzz TV. Yeah. How's it going, Gina? It's good. Who else has been on? We just hung up with Ricky Palomino. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. He says to tell you hello, and we were just oh, talking good. about how proud we are of Zach, how he really in this episode has shown how much he's improved since Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, how he's turning into this little man. He's such a little man <laughs> now, Gina. Are you like... Such this just stud muffin. <laughs> yeah, he's grown about a foot since Abby's Ultimate, too. That, so, too. And that's uh, another thing that I, I wrote cool. in my notes. Yeah. Is that it's, huh? it, that's, that's one thing that I wrote in my notes as well is that I feel like he's grown taller, but it's done him well. Because sometimes, you know, guys or even girls go through that growth spurt where they're like, I don't know yeah, where, they're what, where I'm turning and I'm, I'm not as flexible. But he looked awesome. And, um, and you guys have kind of been on a little roller coaster dancing with candy apples this season. Tell me a little bit about it's that. Yeah, I mean, it's been it's been hard, you know, because everybody thinks that we're, you know, betraying Abby and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But um, the opportunities have been really good for him. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think he's kind of gotten to, you know, get his name out there and, and just do what he loves. So, I mean, it's, it's ended up being a really positive experience. And I've heard, too, that, you know, Abby, she's a professional as well. She knows that this is an opportunity for you guys, too. And so was, I, I remember Zach saying that the last time that he had been with Kenny Apples, that Abby gave him a hug before going on stage or something like that. Do you guys still have a good relationship with Abby? Yeah, I mean, I feel like for the most part, um, you know, when I, if I see Abby or Zach sees Abby, she's, she kind of gives a little wink, you know, like, good job or whatever. But um, I know that still kind of probably nags at her a little bit that, you know, <laughs> she doesn't have, you know, Zach, and and it, make, it makes us feel bad. We, we <laughs> honestly do feel bad, but like I said, it's just all about the opportunities. I Absolutely. mean, you've got to take what you can get in this industry, so, you know. And I think it's been really, really good for him. Ricky just said this. It's been really great for Zach to work with Anthony a lot more as well. So uh, yeah, it's been, that's, that's probably been the roughest part is working with Anthony. <laughs> He's, He's very hard to work with. But yeah. Yeah, well, what was that? A lot. What was that sigh for, Gina? What what what, what did that mean? <laughs> I mean, you know, he's just he's a really tough choreographer. His process is very different from anybody that you know Zach's ever worked with, and a lot of these kids have worked with. You know, mm -hmm, um, yeah. so his his process is something to get used to, and um, his patience is is very very <laughs> limited. Mm -hmm. so, I'm laughing you because know, I know. He, he makes me cry, so I'm like, oh, what? my God. We're supposed to talk to him soon. We're going to ask him about that. Has he made yeah, tell him to stop making me cry. <laughs> Has he made Zach cry before? Um, yeah, he's gotten to Zach a little bit, but I think, too, he's gotten to Zach because, you know, the kids get fatigued and overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, you know, if, if I fight with him a little bit because I'm concerned, you know, then Zach gets upset, you know. So, I mean, it, it's not, you know, it's, there's so many factors and variables, but, um, you know, he's just a tough guy. And he'll tell you in the room, he says, I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm a crazy artist. <laughs> and he is. And then we walk out of the room and he's, you know, a lovable guy. So, I mean, that that's helpful. And then lastly, I got to ask you about Rick and Jalen. <laughs> Oh, Rick and Jalen. Uh -huh. Rick is Rick is the coolest, coolest guy ever, and he will not speak up unless someone addresses him. Mm -hmm. So you got to know that if you see him running his mouth, it's because somebody provoked him to run his mouth, and okay. he is extremely protective of not Jalen, but everybody. Mm -hmm. He's protective okay. of everybody. So he's a great guy. That's good to know. Yeah. That's good to know because he definitely hasn't been perceived in the greatest, but you in know the greatest what? light. There was that scene when Jalen was crying and he said to Jalen, you know, like, 
at any moment if you want to get out of here like you just say the word yep. like you don't have to do this and when I saw that scene I'm like okay this guy's legit like, he's this cool. guy's a really good no, dad he's cool. cool I mean and when Zach has a really hard time um he's gone in and kind of watched rehearsal for me because maybe sometimes it's too much for me to deal with because you know I'll just upset him so he'll go in and watch rehearsal make sure that everything's going okay and he just he looks after all of us and he, he just said he really he's a genuinely good guy and a few times he's been out of line and he will always be the first to come and say you know what I was wrong and I apologize God. so you yeah he, he's he's awesome I have nothing bad to say about Rick and then um last but not least I think I said I said that already but what what has Zach been up to what's going on is he still at his studio in Arizona is he going to be in LA this summer is he still with Candy Apples what's where are we going to find Zach yeah. next um well we are all, we are competing with our studio as well so he's in the middle of um you know, doing some competitions and some conventions and this and that. Um, we will be going back with Candy Apple to finish off the season there, too, because, um, again, it's a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. So uh, he'll be back and forth, you know, and, and just, you know, just depending on what opportunities come is where we'll be, you know, Good. as long as he's as long as he's passionate and enjoying it. So. It's all up to him. Well, good. We're so glad to hear that. We're glad that you're doing well. Please um, give him a big hug for us. Mm -hmm. And if you're ever in the L.A. area, we'd love to have you guys here. So stay in touch. You know what? I was just talking to him about that. We will be in the L.A. area probably the end of July. So we'll let you know. Perfect. Ooh, and Gina, I'm doing my uh, benefit show at the end of July. And so please hit you're me up because I'm going to bring in some kids to perform. And I'd love to have him. Oh, that, what's, what's it called again? It's what called show? Art for Life. It's a big charity event. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll have, we'll, I'm not sure of the date, but I know it's the end of August. Oh, August. Okay. Well, or, I'm sorry, the end of July, beginning of August. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk about that later. You can find me on Perfect. Facebook or on Twitter, and I'm Giselle Ugarte. G I S E L L E U G A R T E. So. <laughs> Perfect. Yay. Okay. Have a good night, Gina. Thanks for calling. Okay, so on to the competition. Vivi is sick. Kathy is a no-show, at least at the very beginning. Um, I just want to get right into the numbers and just breeze through those, hear what you yeah. have to say about what we see on stage. A lot of the numbers we got to see most of, which we don't usually, but it was yes. a two-hour episode, which is great. And then there were a couple that were cut off, which kind of pissed me off. But if I you go online to mylifetime.com, you can see the full um, numbers or also our awesome dance super fan, dance mom super fans post links on YouTube that were actually there went to the so competition good. which is crazy because I absolutely hate when they cut the numbers in I half. know they did that on Abby's ultimate and I was just like come on <laughs> and then they won't even and then they're like why didn't you show that part yeah like, why it's like it makes no sense but um I loved the day of the dead piece let's talk like about well, let's go talk about the solos first okay Asia who ended Asia. up winning not only first place but the judges choice for the young division that she yes. was in. Um, they kept on calling her Buzz Lightyear, which I mean, she kind of looked like <laughs> she Buzz did. Lightyear. She totally looked like Buzz Lightyear. What'd you think of this number? I liked it. I mean, she did a good job. I, you know, it wasn't anything that like blew my mind, but she's Asia. She can do anything and make it look great. So. See, for me, I thought it was my favorite number that I've seen of her yeah. at Abby Lee's. Okay, yeah. Maybe not Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, because she had, I mean, she had some Ricky numbers. Palomino, yeah. just, and and the finale dance that she did as well by yeah the with the tiger with, by Molly oh. yeah oh and the cage that one was called the cage one yeah. she had some great she had some really good ones but, <laughs> but at 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 Abby's at the Abby Lee Dance Company this was my favorite of her so far because we've been talking about how choreographically maybe she hasn't been given something to all of her strengths and with uh -huh. this one I was really blown away because she showed a little bit of depth also some isolation yeah and it, it was really dynamic for her yeah and yeah. also. Her costume kind of had a way of shielding some of the problems that she sometimes has, yes, like the sickling like of the feet or her bent her knees. Feet. Yeah. <laughs> I still see that, but so, that's just me yeah, being me. But in terms of, like, you know, aesthetic-wise, I really liked it. I just wrote the word boom. She was cute at the end, too, her little, like, robot <laughs> section in her face. I was like, oh, There was nothing mechanical about that. <laughs> no emotions. <laughs> Maddie's. Maddie, gorgeous. First place. 
gorgeous. I was blown away. And so we, beautiful. Every week, we always talk about how we're like, oh, again. Yeah. Ugh, again. It's the same thing. And this one I really liked because I felt like she looked older. She looked she more did. like a woman in this dance. I don't I know if it was the costume. Thing. I don't know if it was the music, the emotion, the choreography. But, I mean, her turn sequences are always out of control. Yes. Whenever she, you know, goes from a turn down to the ground, it's... So smooth crazy and, and smooth, yeah. and she just really executes every single movement. I loved it. Um, Chloe's. Yeah. Oh, Chloe. I really like Chloe. I a know. Lot. I love Chloe too. A lot. Okay, like, glad we're on the her. same page. I can already tell. <laughs> yes, love her. But this one, eh. I yeah. think they were just really, and, and I, you know, it's hard when you have to choreograph a million numbers for, you know, your dancers, and the same dancer has a thousand solos throughout the season, you know, but. I feel like this one, they were kind of trying to give her something a little bit, like, sassy and stylistically different. It wasn't bad. Yeah. I just wasn't, like, wowed by it. I agree. And I think even the choreography, to me, it wasn't that great, but I also felt like emotionally she could have made it even better. Yeah. Like, she could have played it off to be bigger, mm -hmm. and it was still very... Yeah, I felt like she was, uh, like, you know, she was being asked to be a little bit more, like, rawr, a little bit more mature and, like, grounded, and she still felt very light and cutesy yeah. and kind of up here. <laughs> I mean, and she's a kid, so you can't, I mean, you can't expect too much of that, but... Well, she got she's third capable. place. Yes. But she actually tied with Zach. He is. However, Zach won purely based on technique. technique. Which is accurate. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah. I loved Zach. So let's skip to Zach's the doctor thing. Personally, I didn't really I hated get it. the costume. Hated it. I didn't mind the costume that much. Hated it. But I just Me didn't understand the concept. It. Did you get the concept? I mean, I think it was it meant to be left open for interpretation, okay. perhaps. Perhaps. I mean, I don't know. I thought, this is really a random side note, but I saw this show when I was, like, in my late teens by Wes Felding, one of my favorite choreographers ever. And in his show, the dancers had those, what are those called? Stethoscopes. And during the show, they put them over their hearts and put them on the audience members' ears so that the audience could hear their hearts. So when I saw it, that's all I could think about. <laughs> but, I, th I mean, I think there was some sort of connection about, like, you know, being saved. I, it, it didn't make sense to me, but I didn't really care. But I did hate the costume. I am not a fan of literal. Okay. And I feel like, in general, on this show, Sorry Dance Moms, in general, it goes too literal, you okay. know, with the costuming and stuff. I'm like, just leave it open a huh. little bit. Maybe what, what costume would you have, have done? I don't know. Something not a doctor's outfit. <laughs> not scrubs. I didn't mind it. I liked it. I thought it was one of my favorites from him, and we've well, already said enough. Well, was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the dance itself was amazing. Love him. Technically amazing. He's growing up. He's turning into a that. man. <laughs> um, and then Kendall... She had more facial than usual, but it still just looked like it was so choreographed, like even every little movement, and it wasn't made her own. Yeah, it a wasn't little. Powerful. But she, is, she has grown a lot. She has. Still. She's improved a ton. Said. But lots of bent legs, lots of shoulders, lots of yeah. flared nostrils. I liked her costume, though. Her lipstick looked great. The mm -hmm. red lip was <laughs> on, on point. point. <laughs> we, always say, we say lots of the same things. Duet of uh, Jalen and Malou. It was called Illusion. I don't remember Illusion. who the partner's name I, was. The partner was really good. Yes. Great I actually Turner, really liked technician. this duet. They were off when they were supposed to be together, but when they weren't together, I, I thought it was it. really I good. I thought it was well choreographed for them, yeah. for their strength. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, it's I was impressed by this one. They got first place for that. Uh -huh. And then now, Day of the Dead versus Runaways. Oh, Day of the Dead, a thousand percent. Amaze balls. Amaze balls. The makeup was amazing. The costumes were amazing. It was so creepy. It was. And they, like, the dancers really, like, dug into it, too. And I loved when Victoria had her leg up and she was oh, spinning around. And she, with yeah, Zach. with Zach. Yeah, was that just, was so then great. Then she was passed around and hit the ground. And I, I, loved, I loved it when it. she went, like, over the top and then she kind of ended up on him and she came down. It wasn't very smoothly done, but I liked the idea <laughs> The of idea it. of it. Yeah. And then Runaways, the the difference, though, that the thing that I appreciated about Runaways, even the Runaways ended up getting second, wah, wah, um, is the fact that you can tell that they're a team. Yeah. That there was a lot of synchronized choreography, yeah, it was very and they clean. were very, very together. Yes. And granted, you know, that's something that we were talking about, how Anthony used his strengths, and 
and use different dancer strengths and have them do different things and and that's great it's a beautiful yeah. production but one thing that you have to appreciate is just the fact that they're so together and they're so they in were. sync they really were to a point they, well I'm, that we clearly didn't see cuz it looks like they hid some stuff from us yeah with the whole page thing i was like i don't even know what they're talking about whose really. fault was that by the way okay as i said before i do believe that when abby does and says things she does them with you know good clearly good intentions However, her thought process about the whole thing wasn't the way that I would approach it. You know, you can't ask a child to approach adults and say, I heard you've been talking about me. Let's, you know, let's talk about it. Like, that's just not. I thought that Kelly was more offended than Paige. Yeah, it did seem that way. But I totally understand how, how and why Kelly would be offended. You yeah. cannot ask a child. Like, I get why Abby would say, like, I'm teaching her to stand up for herself. If it was some other kids, but not grown adults. You don't, like, send your child to do your job. I didn't mind th it that much if it was an actual, like, correction or critique. What yeah. I didn't like was that supposedly, supposedly, Abby claims that Anthony said that she should give up dancing and go model. Yeah, which we will ask which him about. Which that would be if something call, personal. Anthony, where are you? I know, he has, like, three minutes to call. <laughs> so maybe he'll he'll have to make it up to us by coming into the studio next week. Yeah. Um and then what else what else? Rick Jalen Cre I don't I don't even know what I wrote. Oh, Abby leaves us hanging with saying that she's going to look at real estate oh, in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. Do you know anything about that? I don't. I was actually like I should hit her up and see. <laughs> but I don't. I haven't spoken to her in a couple of weeks. Um so I don't Could really know. Could Abby be moving to Los her. Angeles? Perhaps. What would happen? I mean, I know she has some really great teachers at the studio. So I'm sure the studio would still do just fine. I don't know. Nothing against her. She's she is Abby and there is no one to Maybe replace she'll have her. Maybe she have a two. Perhaps. The two. Yeah. Um let's move on to some news and gossip. Very so, um, really quickly, a little bit of news and gossip. One thing that we can be sure to expect is that um, Hadley Waltz will be joining the Candy Apples oh. along with Zach. Um, and so hopefully we will have Yvette call in for that one. She'll stay up past her bedtime to talk to us. Uh, we will be moving back to the normal time Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Um, to do our regular Dance Moms. Any other news and gossip that you think we should be aware of? Since Anthony didn't give us a call. I know. Where is he? I think he thought he had longer. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Oh, I'm on the spot. No, I don't think I've got anything for okay, you. Well, I'll let you think about that kids. for a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> listeners, if you're tuning in live or if you're watching us or listening to us later, um, please make sure that you go find us on AfterBuzzTV.com, on iTunes. Make sure that you subscribe to our podcast as well as rate us. Please give us five stars. If you don't think we deserve five stars, tell us why so that we can get your five stars. <laughs> and then also make sure that you check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to youtube.com slash after buzz tv and give us a thumbs up if you want to see more please 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 like us there as well um you know we we appreciate you tuning in every single week being so active with us following us on twitter i'm always live tweeting at still you guardian we love when we have guests like this tune in because you guys create the buzz at home tweeting <laughs> them texting them letting them know that they should be watching us on after buzz tv so anything that you thought of I'm sorry, gossip. no. I think bunch. we covered well, it. Well, hopefully we'll have her come back. <laughs> hopefully we'll have her back in the studio. We loved having you today. Yes, I would love um, to. Let us know where we can find you. Yeah, I'm Gina Starbuck on all the goodie sites. Instagram at Gina Starbuck. Twitter at Gina Starbuck. Dot My com. website is GinaStarbuck.com. Perfect. So YouTube, YouTube.com slash Gina Starbuck. I'm just me. Love it. <laughs> Perfect. Very easy. So Gina yeah. Starbuck, it should be across your screen. Otherwise, it's spelled G-I-N-A-S-T-A-R-B-U-C-K. You got it. If you're listening, um, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Giselle Ugardi. You can find me as well on all the different social media mediums. Media mediums or social that, mediums? I like that. Social media mediums. Social mediums. <laughs> Try and say that. Um, at Giselle Ugardi, G I S E L L E U G A R T E. And my YouTube channel is Sprinting Stilettos TV based on my blog, sprintingandstilettos.com. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night.
from Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.